Yeah, f- first of all, you know, congratulate Toledo. I thought they, you know, did a lot of really good things and played well and and uh, certainly were, you know, beyond tough as, a, as an opponent. We knew going in, obviously, they were the highest rated offensive team that we had defended in my six-year tenure here. Um, number one in the league in league games and then top 15 in the country. So we knew they'd be a handful there. You know, I, I thought the difference in the game was – our inability to be effective offensively in the first half. Um, obviously, once we settled in the second half, we shot over, you know, 50% from three and 40 or 44 from three and 50 overall and 78 from the line. And we had a really good second half offensively. Um, unfortunately, our offensive woes put us in a situation where we were behind and playing from behind the entire game. Um, but I thought offensively, we played a good second half. I thought defensively we battled. They're just so hard to stop. You know, I, th- I think at the end of the day, Maddox's big shots late in the game were really difference maker plays, right? When you think you've got a run going and you got a chance and you get it to one or two possessions, I thought his ability to make some big shots uh, really propelled him. Um, so give him a lot of credit. And then lastly, you know, obviously I'm very disappointed with the free throw discrepancy. To, to That would be an understatement. Um, I'll have to take a look at it. Um, I, I didn't like a couple of the calls, quite frankly. Um, but I'll look at it on the film and try to have more of an unbiased a- approach. Uh, as my dad and my old coach used to say, the film never lies. So I'll take a look at the film and I'll see what it looks like. I, I could be wrong. I mean, I've been wrong a, a lot in my life, but certainly didn't look that way on a couple of them, in particular the strip by Castaneda that I thought was a really big call. Uh, late in the game, thought it was clean. Um, that's a big call. So, you know, obviously I'm disappointed they shot 28 free throws at home to R11. You could probably look over a six-year window and not see a plus 17 discrepancy at the free throw line uh, at home in my six years here. If you find it, I bet it's five or less games in six years. So that was a big factor uh, in the game. And especially for us, we're top 100 in the country in fewest fouls per game per Ken Palm, and um, very uncharacteristic of us. But before I comment further on that, I'd like to watch the film. I may have some comments on that that are a little bit more detailed later once I get a chance to look at it. Uh, So I I just thought Maddox's shot making, the free throw discrepancy, our offensive woes in the first half made us play from behind throughout the 40 minutes. Coach, in the first half, you guys had some good looks that just weren't falling. What were you? What was the conversation at halftime to get the guys kind of right? Yeah, I thought it's a great question. Um, I thought you're right. I thought to start the game offensively, we had several good threes um, off of inside-out penetration. We just didn't make them, and uh, and and quite honestly, they're a great shooting team too. They didn't make some of theirs. They'd probably tell you that they normally would make too, because it was very hard for either team to score there the first three, four, five minutes of the game. Um, but uh, I thought we came out in the second half, we settled in is what we did. I thought we had more purpose, drove the ball better, posted it better, uh, played inside out more, and had a, had a good, had a good uh, really good second half offensively. And then to get 14 offensive rebounds, I think showed your guys' effort on the glass. I thought that was really good. We batted around 35% on the offensive backboard, and so that's a really good number uh, percentage-wise. But... You know, again, Maddox shot making, I thought was elite late in the game, the free throw discrepancy and our offensive woes in the first half. Hey coach, uh, Alex Henry, WCIP. Uh, the Warriors just played in the game 72-60. Uh, Toledo, you were able to bring it back uh, 74-71. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you kind of telling your players in that moment when the game's getting so tight? Well, we've got older guys. So even though we didn't have any timeouts, I mean, they know what to do. I mean, they're – you know, those guys have won a lot of games, been a lot of big games, close games. You know, there was no panic at all. I mean, they, they showed great poise. We just didn't make enough plays at the end. They made some. In particular, those Maddox shots were huge. You know, give that kid credit. Those were hard shots off the dribble uh, from three and from two. Big-time shots uh, that, that he made uh, for them. Hey, Coach Logan Conger of WCIP Akron. You mentioned some questionable officiating throughout the game. How do you rally your guys to overcome the calls and continue to play your game? Well, you can't control that. You got to keep moving forward, you know. And 
that's what we're going to do. We got to get ready for a national TV game on Friday night in Athens against the second best offense in the league, you know, in overall games, you know, going into tonight. So that'll be a, we didn't I didn't think we guarded them very well at home to be honest with you. We 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 played pretty good on offense, which I think ultimately is why we won the home game against them. But we're going to have to play better defensively um, and play better than we did tonight. You know, I thought our energy level was a little bit, you know, up and down tonight. Our physicality wasn't as good as it was on Friday night. But, you know, give our guys credit. I mean, they won eight games in a row in this league. That's hard to do. Um, and they've really brought it for the most part every day, whether it's practice or games. You know, I'm really proud of them. Um, we, just, we just didn't have quite that, that extra over-the-top physicality and toughness tonight, especially in the first half where I thought Toledo was exceptional. Uh, with that, so you know, give them, you know, give them credit. Coach, one more. Um, you know, you talk about the players. Where where do they seem to be right now mentally um, after taking that loss, especially? Yeah, no, they'll be fine. They'll be in a good. You know, we got some tough dudes, and uh, they know we didn't play particularly well. We probably gave up too many points. You know, it's hard to win when you give up eighty plus. Um, but I thought they fought, you know, tried to, like you said, it got to a three-point game, and then, you know, we were right there um, after things not really going our way most of the night, you know. So they'll, they'll be they'll, they'll be fine. We got some tough guys. They've, they've dealt with adversity. We scheduled the non-conference schedule the way that we did, as hard as it was, you know, five top 100 net games, the most in the league other than Buffalo, and clearly the hardest schedule we've had in six years because I thought they could handle it. Because when you do that, obviously, the harder you schedule, you take a risk, you might get beat in a game, you know, more, more likely. It might happen, you know. But we're not afraid of that. Our guys aren't afraid to, you know, you know they're not afraid of that. So they, they know this is a great learning experience for us. We'll show them clips tomorrow like we always do. We're going to stay the course. We're not going to do anything different than had we won, quite frankly. Um, I already had tomorrow planned anyway, so nobody's going to panic. You know, we're going to keep doing what we do and try to do it a little bit better. So no off day tomorrow, you're going to race? Yeah, we were going to do that tomorrow anyway, but we're not going to do anything physically tomorrow. You know, they've given a lot here during this stretch where they've won, the, you know, eight out of nine league games, and they've done a, given us an awful lot. You guys have expended a lot of energy. I thought that the rivalry game on Friday night took a little bit out of us. I was worried about that, but we've managed that the last couple of days and didn't do a whole lot physically. And ultimately, I don't think that was a factor. You know, it was more, you know, Toledo's really good play. Maddox is shot making. You know, like we said, our offensive woes in the first half, I got to do a better job helping them. In the second half, we were really good on offense. And, uh, and then the free throw discrepancy, you know, it's just too large to overcome. And they made 23 out of 28. We were nine for 11. You know, that's plus, help me out, guys. I am a math major. I should do and figure that out pretty quickly. Plus 14 and lose the game by 10. To me, that's what it was about. It's about the free throw line. Absolutely. Uh, with, uh, with the win streak, just where do you feel like during that eight games this team played its best basketball? At Buffalo. Buffalo yeah, at Buffalo. I even said that to him the other day as we took a look at the Kent game. You know, I said everyone in the community is probably going to tell you differently, but the reality of it is our best half last week was the first half in Buffalo, New York. It was better than, than either the halves against Kent or the first half in Buffalo, or the second half in Buffalo. Our first half last week against Buffalo was the best we've played all year. If you combine both O, D, shot making, the whole nine, you know. No, I don't know about that. You know, they, they know what they're – those guys know what – I got so many older guys now, great leadership and captains. So I told them we had no timeouts left. They said, we don't have any timeouts left. I said, ah, oh, you guys are good. You don't need me. <laughs> you know what you're doing. You know, a guy like Greg's been around forever. You know, X has got a ton of games under his belt. Freeman does too. They played in – championship games, regular season, conference tournament championship games. I mean, they've played in all kinds of games. So, you know, we've got – we're very fortunate in that way that we have really good leadership, good captains, and experienced – some guys that are experienced winners. Last one left for you. Um, Trenton Hankerson had two clutch threes in the last minutes of the game. Although it didn't propel you guys to a win, what did you like from him? No, it's great to see him make shots. We know he's capable. He's six for 11 from three tonight. It's awesome. Good for Hank. And they were all pretty good ones. The only one he took that was a – you know, and he'd like to have it back, I'm sure, is the air ball in the left corner where he just didn't read the close out very well. But the other 10 he took out of those 11 attempts were great. You know, it's a pretty good ratio when you're out there playing at live speed. You know, I thought he was really good defensively like he always is. He was good with his shot making. We'll look at it. There'll be some things he needs to clean up. There'll be some things that, you know, we get to play him again at some point here, a second time at Toledo. So 
we'll have to coach them a little better, play a little better, and try to figure out what adjustments to make heading into game two.